Investors spending millions of dollars and thousands of Jamaicans being trained in logistics. The business environment is prepared to compete globally. By all accounts, Jamaica is well on her way to a logistics-centered economy. Let's now focus on what logistics uh, and the Logistics Hub Trust is about. Um, I like to use a, a, an analogy with the Carnation Market. Simply put, uh, Carnation Market is, a, is one specific location. Goods are coming into the Carnation Market from varying points of Jamaica. That's the farmers who bring the goods in. When it gets to the Carnation Market, in the first instance, the persons who are selling these goods add value to it. It's clean, it's bagged, it's processed in some small form in some instances. And then it's sold to a consumer, it's sold to a business place, it's sold to a, a caterer, um, varying people who add additional value to it. So then we take that concept and we put Jamaica in as the logistics hub. And, and for sure what we need to speak about is Jamaica becoming a logistics hub. That central point where suppliers, service providers and global businesses can converge. While our laws and systems take shape, the world is noticing that our little island is the perfect destination for doing business. So much so that hundreds of Jamaicans have found jobs in sectors like business process outsourcing, in call centers like this one. But before these men and women could have been hired, a proper framework had to be laid, including training and legislative reform. There have been new developments in the area of education and training. Jamaicans in rural and urban parishes have been armed with a multiplicity of skills. From information on what is logistics to understanding what a container is and how many loads a shipment may contain, to training at the secondary to tertiary level in logistics and supply chain management. We have conducted 34,850 you know, participants. We have conducted this training to face to face, in addition to several online and different, you know, I'm um, using social media. The ship said, why don't we reorganize ourselves like the airline? Training began with a course called Logistics 101. It's now been expanded to Logistics 102. The 102 is an advanced course which again will make free of cost to the public and this is now a two-day training program which we are now going to a specialized module where we're doing logistics and supply chain operations. We'll start by looking at the changes in the whole logistics industry, the impact of globalization, how branding affects you know, everything, the economic zones and we're going to take this you know, as a slice where we get deeper and give people certain tools to be able to analyze the global industry. And th this is a, a must do. Business people have also been given technical and financial support to strengthen their institutional capacity. The Jamaica Business Development Corporation, the JBDC, has played a key role with its island-wide mobile business clinics. Hundreds of small business operators are now equipped with the proper knowledge to advance their companies and improve job creation. We have adjusted our business model to address those issues. For instance, we know that the whole business of global standards is critical because we're not operating within your parish, you're operating within the global market space. So they must be familiar and understand that global standards must apply to the services and products that they will be offering to the market. Legislative reform is another critical strategy to position Jamaica as the fourth major node in the global logistics chain. Industry Investment and Commerce Minister Anthony Hilton has spearheaded legislative reform and has implemented policies to ensure businesses can become more globally competitive. One new piece of legislation is the Insolvency Act, which consolidates the laws relating to bankruptcy, insolvency, receiverships, provisional supervision, and winding up. The Ministry of Investment and Commerce has been doing a lot of work where MSMEs are concerned. So the Ministry of Industry and Commerce went ahead, they did an MSME policy, which really laid the fundamental groundwork 
for MSMEs to establish and have sustainable businesses in Jamaica. They have been a part of a um, training program in conjunction with the Development Bank of Jamaica present, provides grant funding for MSMEs to really improve the governance structures of their businesses. Legislative reforms have revolutionized the local business environment, putting Jamaica at the top of several reports, such as the World Bank's Doing Business Report, the World Economic Forum's Global Competitiveness Report, Forbes's Best Countries for Business List, and the World Bank's Logistics Performance Index. The business environment, I mean, the business and inter businesses that interact with the tax office, business that interact with the various government agencies, now will tell you, they will testify that the business environment has compared to probably a couple of years ago has greatly improved. A lot of stuff that they used to take months or, or you know, a long time to get done is now happening at a very um, fast pace. Um, contractors are getting their, their plans approved even quicker. You know, that means quite a few stuff has happened. The government through the ministry has also attracted investors to build businesses to employ more Jamaicans. So much so that the country is being referred to as the sweet spot for investors. Following the Jamaica Investment Forum in 2012, the Sutherland Global Solutions Business Process Outsourcing Center was opened. Then in 2015, the ministry once again, through its agency, the Jamaica Promotions Corporation, hosted Jamaica's premier business event, welcoming more than 184 investors for three days in Montego Bay under the theme, Let's Do Business. The second Jamaica Investment Forum focused on displaying bankable projects with opportunities for public-private partnerships, the sale and development of property, and promoting joint ventures. More than one billion US dollars worth of projects were on show for investors who were notably impressed. Going forward, the country is ready to take advantage of the opportunities that will emerge from the establishment of an international financial services center. The expansion of this very lucrative industry will result in economic growth for Jamaica and could provide employment for as many as 15,000 people. At the forum, a local IFC received positive feedback from local and international investors. It's expected that with the strengthening of the legal framework to support this emerging industry, more investment will be seen in this sector. So if we, for a second, just drop off the logistics side and then focus on sustainable development, um, the objective is to ensure that we, we gain sustainable growth. Um, we, we, the focus of logistics is based on the trend and changes in global, um, the global market. One of the first things, again, the Ministry has been focused on is, uh, for varying reasons, how do we improve our Free Zone Act. The Free Zone Act of the past um, was, well, where the WTO is concerned, had some uh, subsidies and incentives in there that the uh, World Trade Organization has said they no longer want in policies of that nature, such as 85% um, of what you manufactured there had to be exported, only 15%, etc., could go into the local economy. So we now look at the, the special economic zone regime to allow for backward linkages, um, allowing for the local economy to benefit significantly more, but also modernize it in such that it becomes more competitive to the rest of the world. This would move Jamaica from simply being a transshipment port to a hub where value can be added, where industries can be created and jobs multiplied. If you are that type of business who want to get involved in, for example, logistics businesses, you can get the necessary training. Training is available. Um, training provided by one, the Caribbean Maritime Institute. I know Fritz Spinnock, um, leading the Caribbean Maritime Institute, has gone ahead and prepared several programs um, preemptively to take advantage of the opportunities that are going to be presented. The Heart NTA is doing some amount of training, and you would have heard about Logistics 101 and 102, um, which has a free component in it that really provides um, training and, and really providing the information for businesses to take advantage of the opportunities that are going to be presented um, in the future. Positioning Jamaica as the fourth major node on the global logistics chain is not an overnight job. It has taken years of planning and reform. 
training and commitment to a long-term vision. The Jamaica Logistics Hub Initiative is not a place, it's not a designated factory. It's a combination of activities and industries, all designed to ensure the country can offer the best services and goods to the world. Through institutional strengthening, capacity building, technical support and legislative reform, investors are coming and businesses are being rolled out.